Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back for another video. In today's video, we're going to talk about hand wrist positioning. I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks regarding this. Nonetheless, if you are doing Superman positioning using different coils, flex, uh, knee coil, uh, dedicated coil, whatever, the key factors I want to show you today or share with you, it's uh, very important even though you're using whatever you're using. So if you find these uh, tips and tricks useful, please adapt it. If not, let it be. However, stick around and I will show you. For those who are new, my name is back again. I'm an Amarai videographer. In my channel, I'm covering things from basic to advanced Amarai topics, tutorials just like this one. If you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. We all know that there are so many ways to get to the same goal, right? So even though you have a 20 minutes protocol versus a 10 minutes protocol, if you get to the same goal, it's not that the 20 minutes is the wrong protocol or the 10 minutes is the right protocol, even though you can answer the clinical questions. It's just how you're setting up things, setting up the protocol, the parameters, what you have available. So I made a little presentation with some different positioning results that I want to share with you. So let's go to the presentation. All right. So in this case, I'm using a dedicated hand wrist coil. So even though you're using a different coil or you're using as a Superman positioning, it should be the same, the things I'm going to show you. So this is how we usually do it. We have, we're usually doing lying on the back, feet first, arm downwards. It's most comfortable, right? But it's also challenging if the page is big, it's challenging due to fat saturation, off-center imaging, and so on and so on. But I have to admit that the new scanner now is so much better compared to the before. So we always do like this. Okay, let's go and find a different thing here, which I'm going to show and explain to you why we're using these different things. So you have a pillow right here. Why are we using this kind of pillow and not a big pillow? Let's zoom in right here. This pillow is, uh, I have to admit, if you get with the scanner, this is a Siemens scanner. So whatever we got this, we don't know why we're using it. So we just lie to the side, we never use it. We use a real big pillow. But by using this, it's much better for the airflow. And this is also important if you want to uh, reduce the SAR issues, especially on 3T. And it's formed like for your head, so it's very easy to use. So if you have this available, please check if, if you have it. All right, so that pillow I'm showing you there, and we have some kind of pads uh, at the shoulder just to relieve the pain right there. And the most important is the sandbags and the cushions. So you need to build the arm completely straight, 90 degrees straight with the wrist and the finger, right? And then you also have some cushions under the knee just to relieve the, the pain from the back. And the other arm, you can have it on the stomach or down on the side. It depends on the size of the patients. But remember, do not let the skin touch the board due to the MR safety and so on. And you also have some headphones, earplugs as well, and the alarm button available if there's some emergency. If we open this coin, you can see that it's 90 degrees here, straight. The arm is straight along with the wrist and the fingers. The fingers are as close to each other as possible. And we're using different pads. You see the, the pads here is torn up, so it's out of shape, been there for many years. And however, we also have uh, somehow an oblique pad right there for the fingers. So whenever we close it, it will close, it will uh, fixate the fingers. And we also use some different pads, made pads and uh, Siemens pads or whatever pads we have uh, for this part. And we also use some Pearl Tech pads. It's very useful. Okay. So that's what I recommend. So what I do not recommend, it's not wrong or right, right? But it just look ridiculous and you can also struggle with to get good images. So in this case, the arm is not built up that much. So it's not 90 degrees. So you have uh, some curve right there and the fingers is not closely together. So you get some challenges right there. And I will explain to you later with the images we obtain. So, okay, let's go to the next one. So you see here, you're missing, you should put some bags or something here to get the elbow a little bit up and then you have the 90 degrees straight line. So let's continue here. And you can see whenever we're using the different pads for the helping, you can see we're putting some pads on this side of the finger and there's nothing here, which is not recommended at all. If you're going to use this oblique pad, use it on the front. So you will push the, you will have the, the hand like a straight line, right? So if you're doing the pads like what I'm showing here, then you will have pads pushing like this. So it's somehow oblique. All right. So let's show you some images. 
This is the first one, which is recommended, most comfortable, straight line, fingers all together, fixate and all that. So you get images like this. So this is just a coronal localized. And I really wanted to show this because this was a larger field of view. So it's easier to see the, the radius and the old up. And we get a nice straight line from the fingers to the, through the wrist and through the forearm. And then on the other side, we have this where we don't have the 90 degrees. We have the fingers spread up. So the images will look like something like this. So you're not getting a straight line. And you can see the ulna is somehow oblique because you didn't fixate the arm straight. And with, with the hands spread around like that, it can also be difficult to do a good fat saturation if you're using the standard technique. And sometimes, of course, the patient cannot close it all together, but try, at least try. If they can do it, it would be easy and better for you to obtain good images. And the last part is that the tilting. So let's look at the images right here. So you can see, I really want to have the fingers straight, but because of the pad, it's somehow tilted backwards. So by this, it's much more recommended to put the hand to the coil, make it a straight line, and then you can fix, fixate on the outer part of the hand. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you find this video valuable. Nonetheless, if many of the things I just said now is just, well, what are you talking about? So please don't adapt it. But if you find it useful, try it, adapt it, and always keep in mind that even though you have to go fast, try to work fast, but those small things, if you have it in order and in place, closely hand, 90 degrees, you will get good images and you need to rescan. Your patient will lie more comfortable. Your radiologist will be happy for having good images. And uh, yeah, before we close up, I do have a question for you. Are you thinking about these kind of key factors, what I just show you whenever you're doing hand wrist imaging? If so, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, do not forget to push the like button, hit the subscribe, hit on the notification bell so you get a ding ding whenever new videos for me are coming up. Until next time, please take care and peace out.